what's up guys so today we're going to attempt to change the clutch never done this before seen videos all over the internet trying to figure out how to do it i've got a clutch pulling tool i've got a new clutch it shouldn't be that difficult bearing in mind if it's not seized on the mini's out of the way we're going to drag the engine out now and you're going to learn how to change a clutch and so am i good luck Most of you by now will be looking at all this detritus and thinking, why do we need two socket sets? Why do we need a clutch? We need a clutch because we're putting a bloody clutch in, all right? And then this big copper bar that weighs a ton, that is in case I can't get the flywheel off, so I can use extra leverage to yank it off. Extra leverage, 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 leverage. Explained. Okay, diagram time. Extra leverage, for those who don't know, extra leverage is using something longer to make something easier. Nut, ball. If you attach socket 10 centimeters long and you apply force, and this nut is really tight, the force that you are applying is gonna struggle to go down this short arm in order for it to spin off. Applying a lot of force there, like stupid amounts of force. Take this. Attach an extra long socket on there, 40 centimeters. The force you apply here has more time to travel down here. You're pushing more force for a longer amount of time, making this come down, 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 down. Nuts off. Extra lever and explain. That is a Tom's top tip of how extra leverage is explained. More diagrams coming soon in more video. Back to the episode. Also, I did say yank and I mean yank. Not the yank as in American, I mean yank as in rag. And rag as in pull and rag as in heavy. Um, yeah, just, just mag sayings. I don't expect you to understand. That. So, I'm changed, got my knee protection, got my steel toe caps on. Also got a kneeling mat so you can kneel down and pull the clutch out. So let's get on with that. First of all, friends, you want to move all these screws, all these bolts, tick them all out. I'm not sure whether that needs to come off, so we'll figure that out in a second. And then we'll pull the crankcase cover off, and then we'll uh, take the frickin' switch out. Dirty. Now my engine's been sat for about a year or two, so the first thing I'm gonna check is if it still turns over. And looking like that, it does. You need to take your flywheel puller, which is this. This is a Halford special, so I don't know how good it's gonna be and the quality of it, but we'll give it a whirl. If not, I might have to invest in another one and potentially borrow a rattle gun from someone. Three washers that you've got here. You need to drop that through there. When this is on, we need to make sure that it's not twisted like that, it needs to be straight. Now, to me, that's a bit, well, not straight. The word I would use is this. So we put that on there to the edge, that is just shy. 620, so I'll bang it on there. Spin the engine around. That, take your big bolt, that screws into there. And you need this little device. That stops that in mark, so that slides over the end. So to me now, we look like we're in a relatively good setup. To stop the engine spinning, we're gonna need to wedge something in here, so I just wanna that's getting tight. Now that is rock hard. Would you look at that? It's absolutely 
bent to a smithereen. So that's what you get when you buy a 20 pound Halfords puller. It's still not off. You've seen the leverage was using there. I'm gonna have to nip out and try and get one. Last time I ordered that off the shelf, uh, but I reckon if I get another cheaper one, I'll get it off. But if you're gonna do this, make sure you buy a decent one because that's also egged and the bolt that come with it was shocking. Right, fingers crossed, they will have a clutch tool in health rods. So let's go in and see if they've got it. Last time you had to order it, fingers crossed they'll have it this time. Not got it. Don't know what I'm gonna do now. Oh, I'll have to try and find an alternative. I, I may have found an alternative. There is a machine mart about three miles down the road, so I'm gonna try and head there and see if we've got a flywheel puller. I just need to get it off because like, ugh, it's so frustrating. So we're gonna head there and see if we can get it. You have to save me now. You have to save me. I'm a happy chap here. 26 quid. Is it going to be any good? I don't know, but we're halfway through dragging it off. So if it gets it off, I don't care. Machine Mart save the day again. Never been in there before. Ever. Some bad ratings about Machine Mart, but you never know. If it gets me through pulling the clutch off, I'm a happy man. So let's head home. So we're back home. Let's unbox this and complete this mission. Not got much faith in this already. I've just committed an amateur mistake. We need to remove this bolt. So for this, you'll get a 30 mil socket which fits and just undo that. Oh, finally, yes. Oh my God, what a ball ache that was. Right, that was a major learning curve for me. So we don't lose anything now. I'm gonna put everything back into here how it was. Oops, obviously like that. I'm gonna give this a clean out because it's dirty and then we're gonna swap the clutch and then bang it back in. was potentially the most stressful 10 minutes of my life. Now we're gonna swap the clutch in this and then put it back on. Just look at the grooves on that. That clutch is worn. So it's a good job that we're changing that because it's not been done in about 30 years. Take the new clutch. Well, part of the clutch. So now we're going to transport that into this new clutch, bit of Loctite on there and bolt it in. tighten all that up. So that's now what it should look like. We'll drop the clutch in there and we'll bolt it back onto the engine. This recess goes in that way to stick out that way. That, incorrect. That is the way it goes in. Now we're gonna put these bolts with the washers on that we took off first back on here. But first we need to put a bit of Loctite on them. Now I've left these bolts quite loose because we need to make sure this is all aligned. So.
Right, I've just talked those up to 30 newton meters, going across like that, and then rounding a star, just so there's an even distribution of pressure. So, I don't know if you can see this. No, you can't. It says flywheel center bolt, torque setting 110 to 115 pounds foot. We'll put that on, which is this bolt, and we'll yank that up now. Right, ladies and gentlemen, all that's left to do is to bang the crankcase cover back on, tighten all those up, and that is the clutch swapped. All we have left to do then, before the engine actually goes back in, is change the alternator. I've got a new one that arrived today, while I've been videoing this lovely video for you. Put all the belts back on, then the engine can get dropped in. I need to plumb the brakes in first, actually, because that'll make it easier if I do that. And then it's time to actually get this baby running. go all sealed up clutch swapped there'll be no noise this week as this is an ongoing project from Cade Garlington in Birmingham it's a standard mini with a 998 cc engine he's got plans for an RC40 exhaust like the last one we featured he's got all the interior waiting from in his garage his dad's got a mini it is looking like he's gonna have a family of minis when they're all done so thanks for sending me this Cade and if you want your mini featuring you know what to do the links in the description just like to thank you guys for tuning into this episode I feel like we're actually getting somewhere now in the next episode there'll be a lot more going on so keep subscribing smash that like button give us a share but other than that I will see you shortly Thank you.